Hey y'all, it's Coral, and in this video I will be talking about the different types of government on the Dream SMP. Also, YouTube made me this nice graph. It's a quality graph. It adds up to 100. <laughs> if you aren't subscribed and end up enjoying the video or want to help me improve this graph, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. Enjoy the video. The first form government on the server was the Greater Dream SMP. I will be calling their land the Greater Dream SMP in this video to distinguish it from the server Dream SMP as a whole. The Greater Dream SMP was technically formed on April 25th, 2020, when Dream and George first started the world that began the Dream SMP. However, it was not truly considered a government or a faction at all until they went to war against Wilbur in the War for Lemanbergian Independence. It wasn't until early August that you could even distinguish the government system of the Greater Dream SMP. In early August, towards the end of the war for Lemanbergian independence, Dream made Eric king of the Greater Dream SMP, establishing a monarchy. However, if you look more closely, you can see that the Greater Dream SMP is not a true monarchy. It is really an absolute monarchy with a puppet monarch. Eret is only a figurehead in the Greater Dream SMP, and Dream says this multiple times. How are George you not taken away? You're negotiating on the king's behalf. Oh my, it's it's absolutely. You're negotiating on his behalf. This conversation the king is a figurehead, and he knows that. A dream is that come so in, that's come, what you are that's what you are Eric, a puppet yes is that what you are no he's not a puppet Eric. he's not a puppet he has no Eric. power and, and i have and it's the same thing dream is also the only one to give and take away a kingship as shown when he dethroned Eric and crowned george and then crowned Eric again dream has also said until you decided to attack my nation. And he is often the one to negotiate for the Greater Dream SMP, not Eric. The reason I call Dream an absolute monarch and not a dictator is that Dream didn't take the Greater Dream SMP by force, which really differentiates a dictator from an absolute monarch. He created the server and that land has always been under his power. He's never had to take it. Eric is just a figurehead while Dream is actually ruling from the not so behind the scenes. Dream even confirms his authority as a leader of the Greater Dream SMP when he passes the leadership onto puns. I'm gonna have to at some point leave you in you know leave you in charge here while i i go far away to avoid leave me death. in charge secretly dream never tells the community that puns is the new acting leader in his absence but just as dream did puns is to stay behind the scenes and rule through Eret, even though he has yet to truly use this power one place that has gone under many governmental changes is Lemanberg. Wilbur first started Lemanberg as a dictatorship. After the war for Lemanbergian independence, Wilbur declared himself as president and made the rest of the Lemanbergians his cabinet. I, as the now president of Lemanberg, we're not democratic, I've elected myself. Wilbur may use the title of president, but he isn't very democratic, as he said so himself. Wilbur took power for himself without a democratic election and took Lemanberg from the Greater Dream SMP by force in war, technically making him a dictator. Wilbur later welcomed Nikki and Jack Manifold to Lemanberg and made it so everyone had a job. After that, Wilbur did not stream Dream SMP much until September 3rd, when he told Tommy that, I led the, I led the revolution, right? But the issue is, is that I sort of became the de facto president, but no one listens to me. No one cares about mine or your power. And that they would hold an election to make sure people knew that they were in charge, but they would shut the ballot before anyone else could run against them, which isn't a very democratic thing to do. But before they can close off the ballot, Quackity finds out about the election and decides to run against them. You're telling me only people can vote for you? Well, we're, we're, called, we're the right and the best party. We're the right hand men. But there's the, there's a, the there's left. another party, pal. I am going to run against you, Wilbur, and I what? don't fucking care. This leads to the second administration of Lemanberg, the Schlatt administration. Schlatt wins the Lemanberg election after combining votes with Quackity. Schlatt then declares himself emperor and renames the country Manberg because this country Wait, will what? no longer take L's. Schlatt's government is an electocracy because he was elected fairly, but takes the power into his own hands to make all the decision, no matter who disagrees. This is shown when he wants to tear down the walls because everyone objects, but he makes them do it anyway. I reckon we take down the walls. <gasps> no! What? Oh, yeah. I, what? I don't know about what? that. What? You can't do that. It's what? what? Immediately. Even Wilbur on Reddit says that Schlatt lives by one creed. I was elected fairly, I will rule until I lose the next election. Schlatt accepts the electoral system, but does not let the people make any further decisions, making his administration an electocracy. After Schlatt came to power, he banished Wilbur and Tommy from Manberg, so the two of them created a new faction. 
Pogtopia. Pogtopia is the first commune on the server and does not have one single ruler. When Wilbur and Tommy first create Pogtopia, they agree. Gotta know, me and you are a duo now. There is no precedent. There is no, we've got to be a duo. And on September 25th, Wilbur confirms that they are a commune. We're not, we're not a nation here in Pogtopia, right? But we are, we no. are a commune, right? And the foundation of yeah. any good commune is the food. It's the stomach. Many see Wilbur as the leader of Pogtopia, but I see him more as a revolutionary leader and not solely the leader of Pogtopia. He even acknowledges that he has no ruling power in Pogtopia when he says he has to wait to be president again to abolish Tommy. Dude, I'm going to abolish Tommy, I'm thinking. My first act when I'm, when I'm remade president of Le Manberg, I'm abolishing Tommy. Another faction created during Schlatt's administration is the Badlands. The Badlands were formed by Bad Boy Halo, Ant Frost, and Awesome Dude after they saw Schlatt's tyranny. The three decided to create their own faction where everyone was equal and has equal say. We in the Badlands have been doing things pretty good, and that's because we all have equal say. What do you think about what I'm saying, Ant? No, yeah, yeah, like that. I'm a bad saying. Like we, when it was just me, Bad, and Sam, like we all have equal say. We all eat, vote on things, right? So it's like. You know, we all have a voice in the government, right? It's not like one rule like Schlatt or Tubbo or anything. The Badlands is an isocracy because everyone has equal say and they all come together to discuss decisions. After Schlatt's death, the president of Manberg was passed to Tommy, who changed the name back to Le Manberg before turning down the presidency. Then to Wilbur, who changed the flag back before also turning down the presidency and passing it on to Tubbo. So and there's only one other person who could possibly be the president. Oh? <gasps> Tubbo, I want you to come oh, up onto this. Yes! Uh, yes! Tubbo! Yes! Uh. However, Tubbo was not elected, so the new Lemanberg is a constitutional monarchy. Tubbo is a monarch since he was not elected, but he has a cabinet which could be compared to a parliament since he listens to their ideas and they have a strong say in political matters. However, Tubbo still has the final say as demonstrated when he exiled Tommy even after he told his cabinet that he wouldn't. Dream, I've come to the decision. That will be best for the nation. The most logical thing to do. For Tommy to be exiled from Le Manberg. What? what? Teaming with Technoblade what? is an awful idea. It's an awful idea. We just had this conversation. No, no, okay. Um... Like Wilbur before him, Tubbo takes the title of president, but he is technically a monarch. Tubbo also says that he's going to change Le Manberg to a communist commune. This is it, fellas, all right? Yeah. Okay. I say from this day this forward, we lead forward as a commune. But later that day, Dream recognizes Tubbo as president, aka the sole ruler. No, really? I, I said before that I would, but I, I officially is... recognize Lemanberg. I recognize Lemanberg as its huge. own state. Okay. That is, that is big. That is. And I recognize you, Tubbo, as the president. And then, before they go to kill Dream a month later, Fundy calls him the president. Tubbo. You have a weapon, right? Tubbo. I do. Of yes, course he's, a weapon. Don't, he's the president, don't what do you mean? Back. Showing that the communist ideas didn't really stick. On October 23rd, Laserbeam and Vicstar joined the Dream SMP, and they decided that they didn't like Lemanberg or the Greater Dream SMP, so they founded Boomerville to get away from the government and all the younger, Zoomer Minecrafters. Boomerville believes in anarchism, and they even met with Technoblade to talk about anarchy on December 5th. Governments, they're kind of cringe, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was exactly my feelings, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we're all free men here. We shouldn't have to serve under another, all right? That's just, that's just uncool. So maybe Laser and Vic will be the next people to join the syndicate. H-Bomb also joined Boomerville later that day. On December 1st, Quackity and George founded Mexican Lemanberg. After a protest and argument with Dream, Mexican Lemanberg was renamed El Rapids to separate itself from Lemanberg. It's hard to determine El Rapids' governmental system because they have not done much yet politically. However, they appear to be a constitutional monarchy. Like Wilbur, Quackity elects himself as president of El Rapids with no public election. George, George, this is... The presidential Mexican slab. <gasps> oh! We haven't seen how Quackity handles policies as a ruler, but he does seem to want to at least include his cabinet in decision making. Listen, the listen, at the end of the day, of the end of day this is a situation with with everyone. So you know what? Let's go. Let's go back to your original. Let's let's go. Let's have my boys speak as well because they were part of this as well. OK, Quackity and Tubbo seem to have very similar ways of ruling their nations. On January 15th, the Badlands was expanded into the Eggpire, which you can learn all about in my video linked down below in the description box. The Eggpire is an example of a military dictatorship. Bad Boy Halo plans to use the egg to take over by force, but he says that once they take over, everyone will have an equal say like an isocracy. If we do this, Puffy, if we do this just right, we can come together, okay, form a, a unified government where all of us 
have equal say, a round table, as it will, where we all have equal say over how we go about things. But as the egg pyre continues, you can tell that the equal say isn't really true, especially when Ant and Bad leave Puffy and Sam out of big decisions. Why did you let it out without talking to me? I cannot imagine why you would possibly let it out without talking to me. You know, I don't, well, I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at the two of you. I, I, the... On December twenty sixth, Bad says. Because at the end of the day, if you get what you want, if you're the brainwashed ruler of the entire SMP, wouldn't that be better than not being the ruler, right? Bad says he doesn't want power, but that he is ready to take over the SMP by force, even if people don't agree. Like the egg, hate the egg, it doesn't matter. See, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you like the egg or hate the egg. Because everybody's going to come to love the egg. Everybody is. No one's gonna have a choice about whether they like the egg. Which is a perfect example of a military dictatorship. On January 18th, another faction was confirmed, the Syndicate. The Syndicate was formed by Technoblade and Filza and is all about the anarchy. Technoblade lays out all their anarchism policies in the Syndicate Manifesto. This Syndicate is formed to promote anarchy and fight tyranny in all its forms. That sound good to you? Yeah. We shall have no leader, no member shall be compelled to act if they do not choose to. The final nation is Snowchester. Snowchester was found on January 7th and claimed independence on January 21st. Snowchester is a commune, but it does seem to lean more towards communism in practice than true communism. Tabo says, Technoblade's not a fan of government. Although this isn't a... However, Tebo seems to be the leader. He's the only one that signed the Book of Independence, and he seems to assign jobs and make decisions. Jack Manifold, I want to develop nuclear weapons with you, and I want you to be my second key ruler. And I know you have a, a, an iron gut, if you will. You know, you have a good sense of right and wrong, Jack Manifold. You are clearly, you are clearly one of the purest souls I have ever met. So I think, Jack, you and me, will become the powerhouse on this server. Tubbo may call them a commune, but when communism is in practice, one leader always tends to rise above the rest of the community. And Tubbo even said that him and Jack will become the powerhouses on the server, which doesn't really sound like a commune. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps out creators such as myself. I hope you all have a great day.